People want her to step down. What did she choose? <laughs> she chose to apologize. This wonderful non-apology. So that she's apologizing for this whole hullabaloo with Hong Kong. <laughs>、uh, if you remember, Carrie Lam is the, I guess, chief executive、okay. of Hong Kong,、um, and、uh, okay. she's been very pro-Beijing,、mm-hmm. uh, pushing this extradition bill, which would basically make. Uh, Hong Kong subject to all of Chinese laws, yeah,、uh, or at least the big ones.、Um, and then, yeah, if anyone in Hong Kong commits what would be a crime in mainland China, they just get shipped off to China. Yep, just one signature from from Carrie Lam, or yeah, whoever, whoever the, she the delegates it to. Executive is like, yeah. Hey, here you go, guy who's paid minimum wage. Just <laughs> rubber stamp all of these requests because. <laughs> Yeah, we we don't want to be Hong Kong anymore. We're、yeah. in Beijing. And also make it make a clear definition of all the protests. They they're not against the extraditional law. They're only against extradition with China because China was not included in the existing law. So、mm-hmm. so let's let's talk about her. Why Why didn't she step down, or did she have a choice? I mean, probably everybody knew that she was not elected by the Hong Kong people, but、mm-hmm. by Beijing. So why did Beijing choose her? And then the chief executive of Hong Kong is not an elected official. No,、uh, she is an appointed official by CCP. Yep. So in this page, the picture to the left, as you can see, it's Carrie Lam's. Introduction to Tsinghua University as part of the Hong Kong University Students Union, which means that she went to Tsinghua, which is in Beijing, to be an exchange student there in 1979. And the picture to the second left is、um, she was taking a picture of this guy, and in the back you can you can see、uh, the number is 1979. That's 1979 in Chinese, written in Chinese. And who is this guy? His name is Yuan Yongxi, and he was the、uh, leader of social, of School of Social Science in Tsinghua University back then. But the funny thing is that on the、uh, Wikipedia page of School of Social Science, Tsinghua University, this department or this school didn't f- exist. Until 2012, October 27th. But when Carrie Lam went to Tsinghua University in 1979, they already existed. Huh? Fishy. <laughs> Very fishy. <laughs>、um, and the picture below Yuan Yongxi, there is a handsome guy, and his name is Xi Jinping. Of course, everybody knows who he is. And back then, he studied. In the、uh, Department of Chemical Engineering in Tsinghua University between 1975 to 1979,、yep. so which means that they probably knew each other since then, 40 years ago. Oh yeah. And there is a guy in the military uniform with a question mark on it, and who is he? People believe that he was the real leader behind. Yuan Yongxi, but wh- who is this guy in the military uniform? And we're gonna talk about him in the next page. So his name is Ye Jianying. His last name is Ye. So this is pretty much a very very brief introduction of his file.、Mm-hmm. Um, so pretty much he was one of the founders of PRC. He was a Chinese communist marshal of the. PLA, and there are three definitions that are, that are kind of interesting, but pretty much the he was kind of like the leader of the CIA of China, and、um, there is another term of the Party Committee Secretary.、Uh, we're gonna talk about this term because this is kind of like a term from the Soviet, and it's a Form of、uh, infiltration of the Soviets, which is the communism method. 
Right. So Chinese communism started with the idea of Soviet socialism. Yes. They every time it's so ironic because every time when Chinese people talk about China, they're like, "Yeah, we have five thousand years of history," blah blah blah. But I was like, "Yeah, but look at this. CCP is not a culture of or a history. It's." You guys imported that from Russia, from Soviet back then,、right. and you kind of count them as a part of the five thousand years of history and culture of China. Yeah, and it's a radical change that ended up、uh, rooting out a lot of the, the distinctive culture of China. Yeah, you can't have religion under Soviet socialism. Nope, it's the only religion is in this case the CCP. Yep. So let's move to the next page, and we're going to talk about the party committee. So, as you can see, originally it was from the Leninism,、mm-hmm. which is a democratic centralism. So they believe that power is only belong to one party or one people,、yeah. and and then they、uh, kind of created the central committee of the Communist Party of China. So. This, which means that they have this committee everywhere, in provinces like states here in the U.S.,、um, they have it. They also have it in the city, in the county, and all the state-run business under under the counties like school,、uh, hospitals, and library, police department, bank, and business. Other business,、uh, which means that, for example, if Duke is the、uh, the governor of province A, and I am the committee secretary of the province A, which means that my rank is actually higher than Duke's.、Mm-hmm. And、um, any state runs organization that has more than three CCP members is required to have this committee in the organization. Right. Mm-hmm. Basically, a, a state agent. Yes. So there. Someone who can make sure that everything is marching along in the right regiment. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, all the committee secretaries must have one big boss.、Yep. Who? Xi Jinping. He is the boss of the boss.、Mm. And、um, what what do they do? Like in in a in a company. Like in a business company, what they what do they do? Like what does the secretary do? So they pretty much just、uh, making sure that everything is under、um, the socialism with Chinese characteristics. Right. And then they also promote employees to snitching on each other, which means that if I found Duke is doing something that I don't think he is、um, under this. Socialism with Chinese characteristics. <laughs> like I hate that word. <laughs> <laughs> that I can go to this secretary and just you know report Duke. Right. If if I don't love Big Brother enough, then <laughs> Maggie can just say, "Hey, secretary, I I know someone in the party who's." Doesn't love Big Big Brother. Yeah. Then I disappear. Yeah. <laughs> Or you got fired. And、yeah. pretty much cannot be、uh, hired anywhere else,、mm-hmm. and which is more of a slow death.、Mm-hmm. I mean, disappearance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, I totally think that the structure looks similar, very similar to the pyramid scheme. Oh yeah, definitely.、Mm-hmm. Shall we move to the next page?、Mm-hmm. And so let's go back to Ye. He has six kids from six different women. And his descendants now are more than fifty people. Of course, we couldn't cover everybody, so we pick several, very few of them. And、um, so, pretty much, that he has his son, his daughter, and his second son from left to the right. And Ye Xuanping was his first son. And then, under Ye Xuanping, there is a kind of like a young guy. His name is Ye Zhonghao. He is. The son of Ye Xuanping, but look at their birth date, nineteen twenty four. That was where when Ye Xuanping was born. But his son Ye Zhonghao was born in nineteen thirty eighty three. 
wow, great job. Yeah. <laughs> so, and there is another guy、um, down below to the left. His name is Ye Xuanji. He was born in the 1940s. He was、um, the nephew of Ye Jianying, and pretty much the information from all his relatives, they are pretty much controlled.、Um, they pretty much controlled the Guangdong province, including Hong Kong. It, they they are either governors or. They're doing business, and their business is covering in Hong Kong.